Hey, welcome to this mixing and mastering workshop. And if you are the type of person that is tired of countless YouTube tutorials that lead you nowhere, that some of them confuse you even more, then this is the place to be. I'm Sergio, aka Keith Iron. This is the first in the series of four videos in which I'm gonna teach you the specific techniques that me and other producers use to sound professional. And in order to learn to do this, we need to cut through the noise cut through the confusion, everything that is around online, we need to go to the specific foundations that will, again, allow us to get to sound like the pros. Back when I started producing, my music sounded like garbage. I wanted to sound like the guys at Monster Cat, Never Say Die, Disciple, and so on but every time I compared my music to theirs, I felt discouraged and I just felt ashamed by how bad my music sounded. So I went on YouTube, I went on the internet and I watched hours upon hours of videos. I read books, I researched everything I could get my hands onto. <laughs> Eventually, I got to just a handful of specific techniques that I distilled from all those thousands of hours. And I got those few techniques that are the foundations of mixing and mastering properly and make your tracks sound amazing. So in this first video, we are going to be talking about the 3D soundscape. And you're probably thinking, what does 3D have to do with music? Well, it has to do a lot, because in mixing, one of the things we're trying to do is to create a space that the listener then is gonna feel absorbed into, okay? We need to place different instruments on different places of a 3D, so to speak, soundscape. And what are the axes of this 3D soundscape? Okay, we have the depth. This is things like volume, things like reverb, things like ambience. We have width. This is the panning or how wide or narrow the sound is. And height would be the frequencies. Wait, frequencies? Really? Yeah, really. Basically, our ears are designed to bounce the sound differently, whether it comes from below us or above us. That's why they are not symmetrical top to bottom so we can distinguish sounds that come from up or down. And what happens with this is that higher frequencies are accentuated when they come from the top and low frequencies are accentuated when they come from the bottom. So in our track, when we are boosting highs, we are making the sound feel a little higher in space. And when we boost the lows, we're making it feel a little bit lower in space. When we have a higher pitch instrument, it is also gonna feel higher, and a lower pitch instrument is also gonna feel lower. And so, when we are trying to create a 3D soundscape for our track, we need to take care of things not masking each other. That means if something is in front of other things, we won't be able to hear the things that are behind it. That is why we EQ it, we pan it, we do different things in order to move it around and allow us to hear the whole picture. So let's demonstrate a few of the techniques that we can use to place things in the correct place in the 3D soundscape, okay? So we have this little sound. And how could we change the depth of field, okay? we could do something like increasing or reducing the volume. This would make it feel further away. And as we increase the volume, it becomes closer again. Adding something like a reverb The reverb changes completely the character of the room our sound is placed in, and it can make the room feel 
longer in depth or shorter in depth and it can also make things sound wider or more narrow. So yeah, let's get to that. Let's see how we can change sounds in their width axis, okay? Things like reverb, as we can see, we have stereo here and the reverb by default, usually rivers are a little bit wide. So if we change the stereo character of this reverb, it's gonna start sounding more narrow. Okay, we have things like the Haas effect. We have things like choruses and other type of ambience effects. And of course we have panning. Okay, and what about the height? Well, well, height is a little bit trickier. To change something in the height axis, we would have to either increase or decrease the pitch. And more importantly, we would have to EQ it by increasing or reducing certain frequencies. That would sound more buried under. While if we remove the low end, it would sound like it is losing the ground. It loses the bottom foundation. Now, I've heard this many times. For mixing and mastering, you need expensive VSTs, you need a big studio, or you need to have crazy talent. And let me tell you, those things are the tip of the iceberg, okay? The, of course, those things help, but they're a 10% of the equation. 90% of the iceberg is the foundations that we are learning in this very workshop, okay? And in the next episode, we're going to talk about something very important, which is referencing, okay? So keep it in mind, referencing, very important. Next video, we're going to talk about it thoroughly. If you like this video, I have a PDF with 30 mixing and mastering tips that you're probably going to love. And it's going to be down in the description and in the comments somewhere. Download it and read it all. It's going to be full of tips that you're going to love. And yeah, if you liked it, make sure to like it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and peace.